try and catch us some crabs. This week on All The Stars Sailing Adventures, we'll take you to Island Head Creek, where we try our hand at mud crabbing, and Jess busies himself fixing a leaky deck fitting. back to all the stars sailing adventures if you're enjoying our videos please subscribe and give us a like so we can keep you updated Beautiful Island Head Creek. I was just about to throw the dinghy in the water and we're really keen to try out our brand new crab pot, which hasn't seen the water yet. Try and catch us some crabs. It's not actually an active training zone at the moment, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be allowed in here. But um, this is part of the um, trial bay training zone and so I'm going to put a crab pot in here but it also feels like I'm about to get pounced on by some camoed up soldiers either that or a croc so a little bit hair raising crab pot with my right and I've also got fish head in there so we're all good to go throw it in the water here hopefully don't get taken by a croc come back in a day or two and see how we go just as I'm setting up uh, this crab pot, in the background I've got three if not four turtles, uh, five actually, just breathing on the surface. And another one that's popped up behind me, six, check this out. What a beautiful sleep. I know, there's a little tiny bit of movement now but it's nothing. Tiniest swell coming across the bay, but that's just like a wind chop of about 0.01 of a meter. <laughs> Compared to last, last, or the night before at Curlew Island, yeah, we left at we left at two o'clock in the morning because we weren't getting any sleep. We were getting thrown <laughs> around like rag dolls. <laughs> so it was a big day yesterday, 14 hour sail. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just went looking to see whether you could check the crab pot this morning, but. Um, the tide's a bit too low, a bit too shallow to get in, but we saw quite a few turtles again, didn't we? Yeah. Probably half a dozen That's turtles. Cool. They're like the koala of the ocean. Oh, you get stuffed. Yeah. There's heaps of those shovel nose rays, like small to medium sized rays. Like shoaling water. Mmm, shoaling. All the stars range. <laughs> oh, yeah! All the stars. There's stars everywhere. They've made all these beads since the last time I told Yeah, wow. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. I'm so excited to see if there's crabs in the crab pot. Me too. Should we have a look? Yeah, it's nice exploring the beach and all, but 
Crabs. Crabs. We want crabs. We want crabs. <laughs> we keep marveling at how much wildlife there is everywhere. There's just life. It's just everything, isn't In it? Jess's Birds, words, fish. It's teeming with life. Teeming. Teeming. That, folks, is how you don't catch a mud crab. I, uh, I don't mind admitting that was a bit freaky and uh, I'm gonna go back to my boat and just hide like a little nanny boy in the safety of a 37 foot hole. With our newly holed crab pot and need of some repairs, we retired to the safety of our boat. So I've got a bit of a leaking light prism. These let the light through from the deck into our V-berth. And uh, this one's been leaking, so I've just popped the screws out and I've taken the cover off. I'm basically going to be cutting all this silicon out to remove this and I'll clean up all the old silicon. So I've cut all that silicon off there. Okay. Can you just try and push up through from underneath? I've cut all the outside, but it's still very, very well wedged in there. The other one doesn't leak, so that's good. That's one you did right, Cal. But um, anyway, no one's perfect. I, um, I've managed to dislodge that, as you can see. It's just hanging there now. It's from the inside looking up. That's a solid bit of glass, that is. Usual story. I wish I hadn't looked. But uh, now that I'm scraping all the silicon out of here, I'm finding that the plywood deck underneath here is rotting just getting in through these screw holes so I'm gonna dig all that out dry it all out and then I'm gonna to have to try and fill that with some fiberglass mixture some filler and get to the dry stuff and then leave the whole thing dry out for a couple of days I think that's the best best plan of attack and once all that's dried out in there I'll treat it and then I'll fill it with uh, thickened epoxy resin and then we'll have something solid to go back to. So I just mixed up some thickened epoxy and uh, yeah, I'm gonna fill these screw holes. Uh, we've oversized the holes, fill them up with uh, epoxy and then when they're hardened, I'll pilot drill them again for the screws and yeah, next time we won't have such a leak issue. You can see here I've filled this with thickened epoxy so I've dried out behind there in the balsa core and we've let that dry out for a couple of days and now I've I've sealed this up this yesterday afternoon before the weather changed. Now they're ready for bedding. So I've taken this starboard side one out as well here and we've cleaned up these prisms. They were covered in silicon. We're not using silicon to re re uh, bed them. I'm going to use a uh, marine sealant, which is good for bedding through hull fittings. Here I applied marine sealant into the groove at the rebate and then installed the glass prisms and the follow up bead along the top side before fitting the flange plates. Now just clean off that little bit of excess. So they're all neatly bedded in, cleaned up the excess. Around the sides. And I've got some masking tape on the inside of those prisms until that inside sealant goes off, and then I'll peel that off. And uh, hopefully, we'll have a watertight seal on the deck. So, after a couple of days of motoring, we've used up all our diesel, well, nearly all of our diesel. I'm just uh, emptying our last jerry in there. So, we've only got about 30 litres. But we've only got one leg to go, or one and a half legs to go, before we get to Keppel Bay. We're taking the high tide out of here. Ready for a sail, Rach? <laughs> oh, she 
He's at it again. Oh no, it's not a yucky one, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's a mackerel. It is a mackerel. Yay. Yay. Deal with the rest of it. Uh, Rach, why do you want to put the canara away? Because I don't want to have to do it when it gets even stronger. Okay. And try to put the pole away yeah. in even rougher swell. I'd rather do it now before it gets too yucky. Okay. And am I happy about that? No. <laughs> We're going to lose our speed. Oh, oh. Okay. Pole down wasn't the worst thing in the world, was it? No. With the mackerel already on board, this guy was going straight back in. describe the weather right now oh the weather it's real windy like the boat's being buffeted around quite a bit <laughs> I hope we can sleep well <laughs> yeah right yeah you from the deep south deep south <laughs> yeah the gator country Louisiana don't know how I've managed to do it but I just cooked and I have all my clothes on. I'm fully clothed. So I'm not sure what this is gonna taste like. The not naked chef. The fully clothed chef. Uh, oh well, I'm sure it'll be great. Hand caught mackerel. <laughs> yes. Caught today. Yeah. Fish and chips. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, six in the morning. We spent the night here at uh, North Keppel, it was really nice. Now we're heading into Keppel Bay Marina and we've got a few things to do to the boat. We're going to make a boat shade. Our old friend Keppel Bay, here we come again. week's episode we finally get around to looking more into our starter motor issue whilst Rach gets out the sewing machine to make some very nifty boat shades. <laughs> <laughs>